Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dragon Talk. Uh, my name is Greg Tito, and we'll be starting with a Lord You Should Know segment with these fine gentlemen very soon. Uh, the, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce them so you guys don't feel like you're Howdy. left out in the lurch. This is sure. Chris Perkins. Hello. And Matt Cernan. Howdy. Um, and I am Greg Tito. Uh, I think I might have said that already, but I'm still here. I'm still the same person. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you guys while you're here about stuff that's going on on the D&D Twitch channel this week. I was out uh, of the office the end of last week, so uh, uh, I hope everything went okay. I think it did. I watched some, some recaps. It went fantastically. But we're starting off this week straight. We're going all out with as many programmings as possible. Uh, starting today with three hours of Dragon Talk, uh, we have Lori Should Know. We got two things coming up on that today. Uh, and then we're going to do an interview with uh, Pro Jared. Uh, Jared, I can never say his last name. Knabenbauer. Knabenbauer. Thank you. I need you following me around at all times when I'm talking <laughs> about Jared. <laughs> Jared <laughs> <laughs> Uh We'll be talking to him from 3 to 4 p.m. about uh, Diath and his uh, uh, fun uh, experience playing with Dice Camera Action for the last year and three months. Um, and then we're following up with Holly Conrad at 4 p.m. talking to her about uh, Strix as well as her long history with Dungeons & Dragons as well as Jared's long history with Dungeons & Dragons 2. Uh, and then at 5 p.m. today we will show a marathon of Force Grey Giant Hunters, the first season we uh, debuted about a year ago now uh, on the Nerdist channel through uh, cooperation with them. Um, it has uh, uh, amazing people such as Matt Mercer as the Dungeon Master, Brian Pussain, who you might know from Nerd Poker, as well as from some TV roles. Uh, and uh, Chris Hardwick starts out for the first four episodes, I believe he is on there as well, as Utkarsh Umbudkar, uh, who you may see from uh, Pitch Perfect, um, and uh, a lot of other fun, uh, amazing people. Ashley Johnson, I think, is on that season as well. Uh, so it'll be, cool. yeah. it's, it's a really great way to get back up into the story of Force Grey Season 1 because Force Grey Season 2 will be coming very soon on this very channel. Uh, and that stars some amazing people. I'm going to give you some hints on who it might be, including Joe Manganiello, uh, as well as Deborah Ann Wall, both of which were in the cast of True Blood, will be joining uh, the cast of Force Grey, which is pretty exciting. Those aren't uh, hints. Those are just, that's just, <laughs> yeah, just I know, right? <laughs> I'm just throwing them out there so that people can say it and be like, oh, dude, that, was that really true? Yes, it is true. It's <laughs> happening uh, July 31st. We'll be announcing that for reals later on. But you guys, you got a little sneak peek into that. Uh, all right, then following that up on Tuesday, uh, that is tomorrow, we'll have Dice Camera Action, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, anything fun going to be going on then? Well, we are trying to tie off some loose ends in the Dread Realm of Barovia, and the Waffle Crew has just been sort of shot back in time. Uh, away from Barovia, away from the mist. Still in Barovia, in Barovia oh, but okay. not in old Barovia, in old, old old Barovia. Nice. Okay. Uh, so we'll, Where oh, the sun shines and Strahd is still a living, breathing oh, I, I, man. Oh, that I thought maybe there'd be like a cave Strahd somewhere. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Quest for fire. The whole plot of that yeah. just continues. Uh, that's exciting. I know the wedding uh, uh, yes, last week was a lot of fun. It was a disaster. <laughs> 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 Did not go off without hitches. <laughs> Uh, so we're looking forward to, to continuing that storyline and seeing where you guys go next. There's a lot of other things where the well, we're not, crew we're not can quite go. done with Storm King's Thunder yet either. I know so that's what I'm saying. You got to get back yeah, to that before we jump before right we jump into, into Chult. Tomb, Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, there will be a Maze Arcana Furies Reach. The Teen Phoenix will be dungeon mastering that session, and then Ms. Click's D and D Risen uh, pops off on Wednesday uh, at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, just making sure that it is 4 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. And then uh, following up with uh, Rudy Rutenberg's Maze Arcana for years reach Sunday at 7 p.m. Thursday, 2 p.m., Girls Guts Glory will continue their season. Uh, we'll be in, I'll be interviewing, um, I, don't know, I think it's uh, uh, Sujata Day, I think, will be joining us for the first time. Uh, she. I think she's recently going to be in the second season of... Uh, the HBO comedy Insecure. Mm. I think she is in that. So I'm looking forward to that season coming out because that's She's coming very out soon. Funny. She's very funny. And uh, Ichabod is a, uh, as a character that people really latch onto because he's freaking hilarious. Um, and then oh, following on Thursday is Acquisition Incorporated, the C team, starting at 3.30. Uh, no critical role this week. Uh, so they'll be at Sunday, San Diego Comic Con. I'm sure you can track them down where they'll be doing that. And then on Friday, High Rollers, Uncharted Territory, Episode 5 and 7 p.m., the Dragon Friends uh, are continuing their adventures in Australia slash through time, uh, through Chalt as well, uh, uh, 7 p.m. Friday Pacific time. But they'll be doing it 12 noon Saturday because they're in the future. 
I have to say that every time because it messes me up when I think about it. Awesome. So that's a rundown of what's happening now. Um, we recently also had uh, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms from Codename Entertainment uh, just announced a new champion. So go check at Idol Champions on Twitter or idolchampions.com. They have a new uh, character in their lineup. Uh, they have a whole silhouetted thing because you kind of maybe guess who will be coming up next, but there'll be D &D, uh, characters from D&D &D lore, uh, some of which we might have even mentioned on Lore You Should Know segments um, in there as well. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms is an idol game. Uh, so you send out your party uh, full of D and D characters, rangers, elves, dwarves. I'm messing up races and, and never classes. Never hear from them again. And never hear from them again <laughs> because they're constantly getting experience, killing monsters, uh, collecting loot. Uh, no matter what you do, so it's always going in real time. Of course, you can uh, tweak it and make it better so you get more stuff. Uh, the 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 more um, specialized you make your party, uh, but it's fun. It's a fun little uh, diversion, and people love having it going in the background when you're at work. Don't do that, but I'm totally doing that right now because it's a fun game. Um, and then Hascon is September 8th through 10th in Providence, Rhode Island. Tickets are on sale now for that. It's a celebration of all Hasbro's brands, uh, including My Little Pony, Transformers, as well as some of their licensed brands like Marvel and Star Wars will all be in attendance there. Our corporate overlords, uh, so Magic the Gathering will be there in force doing uh, some tournaments and live play events as well as Dungeons and Dragons events. Uh, so if you're interested in any of those things or some of your family members may be interested in some of the other brands you can go, it's a great weekend uh, to go and see what the new offerings will be uh, for those things such as Monopoly and, and For Real Friends and all that stuff. And then maybe you could uh, partake in a father-daughter, mother-son type D&D game. We'll be having family events like that. So uh, more geared toward younger kids and introducing it into uh, as a family event. Uh, and because, you know, the, the I think the trademark for Hascon is it's a fun family event. No, a fan family event. Fan -mally. So you will have fans in your family, I think. I think <laughs> is what they're going for. <laughs> uh, that's Hascon. <laughs> dot hasbro dot com click on the tickets tab on the top of that ha website and scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see all the D&D events that are listed on there and you can buy tickets for that right about now again that's September 8th through the 10th Providence Rhode Island it's gonna be fun okay uh, all right, I think that's all we're going to talk about for uh, for announcers right now I'm, I'm I apologize if you're gonna listen to all this dragon talk recording because we'll be doing more of this from when we actually do the actual recordings but you guys don't have to deal with that so that's good you're going to announce cool. all this stuff again? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's why I have it on this uh, <laughs> fancy iPad. It's because I have to have it all in my brain. We're doing a lot of stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of programming. Wow. Okay. Nonstop. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I have to do that spiel many times. I'm getting better at it. That, that was great. I used to not be so good. Ixnay on the corporate overlords thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are they not our overlords? <laughs> I think they like being called that. Oh, no. Really? Oh, that's a good thing to know. I think it's the suits. That's what you call it. Oh, because that's not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> potato heads. Potato <laughs> heads. The potato heads in charge at Hasbro. They don't watch Twitch, do they? Okay, we'll Shh. Sure. Hi. All right, we're going to talk about lore you should know now. You ready, Ryan? I'm ready. All right, Ryan is ready, and we're going to record this segment of the podcast uh, for reals now. Okay? All right? Thank you guys for bearing with me on that. And uh, uh, the, the chat, you guys are doing great so far, and I like that you're uh, – uh, 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 paying attention to all of our ramblings. All right. Uh, all right, we're going to go. Welcome to another segment of Lore You Should Know. Uh, that is the segment in which we uh, pick the brains of these two gentlemen. I'm joined by... Chris Perkins. And... Matt Sarnett. And we will get into D&D &D lore, little nuggets, things about uh, the Forgotten Realms, as well as thing uh, ideas that you can probably uh, insert into your own games, is what I like to think about it as. So... Today, we're going to be talking about the character Valindra Shadowmantle. Uh, she was a character, was she introduced with Neverwinter or was she around before that? Long before that. Long before that, okay. Yeah. Educate us, Matt. Ooh, well, a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Valindra is in uh, second edition products and up through third and fourth. Uh, and uh, her backstory is that she was an uh, elf wizard in the high forest in the community there. And uh, basically, uh, she wasn't learning wizardry fast enough. She was like, screw you guys, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. And so then she went to Mirror Bar, and there was a very kindly old wizard there who offered to, to tutor her and, and magic. She's just like, great, I'll sign up with this guy. Killed him and took a spell book. And oh. <laughs> then she went to uh, Luskin that has the, uh, the host tower or host tower of the arcane and signed up with the, the wizards there. And continued to be even more evil. So was she 
uh, originally from the Elves of Silvery Moon? No, the, so the, the High Forest area has a, a, a number of small elven communities in, mm -hmm. in its in areas and various parts of it. There's various sort of named settlements and sort of cities, but they're not really cities. They're just kind of... Um, and areas where elves congregate. Retreats, yeah. share. Yeah. Retreats, right. Okay, that makes sense. And so she was from there, and then she went over towards uh, Luskin. When did, uh, was she always this ambitious? Like when, did, was it like a break in her that changed her or was she all well, kind of always this way? I, my impression is that she was just really, really enthusiastic about magic and was not patient enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, as elves, uh, you know, they're sort of good at magic and they have all these long years to sort of study it and so on. And that's why the sort of the typical elf or magic uh, Wizard of D&D is an elf because, in part, they have these long years to do the rigor study and all that kind of a thing. Uh, and oftentimes in older art, particularly of D&D, the wizard would be a person with a long beard, not just because, you know, wizards with pointy hats and long beards is, is and Gandalf and so on is a pop culture thing, but because wizardry takes time to master. Mm. Uh, and, and the grooming also takes time, so yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do both of them. And so, uh, you know, she didn't want to wait. So she decided not to. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Chris, do you have anything to add as far as her history? Or, or, because I think we want to do an episode eventually, or, or a segment rather, on, on Silvery Moon and the Elves of Forgotten Realms. But any little bits there? Um, no, not really. Uh, she rose quickly through the ranks of the, uh, in the host tower. Um, and uh, at some point, I don't exact, exactly remember the exact date, the host tower fell. Mm -hmm. But she was... Uh, ready to move on <laughs> and uh, fell in with, of all sorts, uh, the Red Wizards of Thay. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, that's sort of, the, what, what happens is that she's made the um, uh, High Wizard, Over Wizard of the North Tower. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the House Tower of the Arcane is sort of like a tree-like structure with these spires, spires in it. And uh, the North Tower is sort of in charge of the um, the wizard over wizard of the North Tower is in charge of all the stuff that's going on in sort of the northern part of their realm that they are trying to take over. So she was in charge of all of the bad things the um, that the Hostar was trying to do in the Silvery Moon area and the North in general and so on. And uh, she was lovers with uh, <laughs> Arklam Greeth, who is the um, overwizard of the, the whole shebang. Uh, and so um, when he blew it up, um, uh, he... Uh, Wait, what, blew it up? What is that? So, so he, he... Oh, he blew was, up the, the host tower. Yeah, yeah. He, he was in the tower, and Dritz and companions and, and many of the characters from the Dritz saga were there to sort of assault the the tower, and Arkham Gwyneth is like, you know what? Now no one can play, and boom. he just boom blows the whole thing up, oh. <laughs> and uh, ended up killing lots of his minions, and and really not really hurting Dritz and companions at all. And um, was like, what, what the f? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> like dude. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, you, what, you didn't tell me you were gonna do this. So she spends uh, actually a, a long period actually being a little bit crazy and loopy. Um, and she h carries with her the uh, phylactery with Arkham Greeth's um, remains, soul, whatever, oh. in it. And uh, and he doesn't regenerate um, immediately. And so she kind of just has Arkham Greeth kind of bound in his phylactery and just sort of carries it around with her. Uh, and occasionally she talks to him, even though he doesn't seem to talk back. And... Uh, she just what gets. Is the, what is his phylactery? Well, so in in the novels, um, it is a, a kind of gem that actually she got from uh, Jarlaxle and uh, that for her own phylactery and Arkham Greeks because they kind of became liches around the same time. Right. And so she, uh, Valindra, has a particular animosity towards Dritz and uh, Jarlaxle and um, Dana. Uh, What's her name? Uh, Danifa, Ned, Dan, Dan, uh, I'm screwing up the name. Mm -hmm. um, That's okay. So she she has an anima. So she was a lich already by the time the host tower fell. Yes. Okay. And then did, did she do that with uh, uh, the the first guy, or was it just kind of? Yeah. 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 I mean, and then, and then she, well, I don't remember where was she was at the time. At the time. <laughs> it was everybody was doing it. I don't remember where she was at the time, but uh, but he but he blew it up basically by himself, I, I believe. I got so. it. Okay. 
And then so she kind of went mad a little bit talking to uh, him, even though he was not answering and or even aware that she was talking to right. him. Right. Yeah. It's not clear that that um, in the novels that um, uh, Ari Salvador wrote that, uh, you know, that there's anyone there that she's actually talking to, even though she's got his soul gem and is just sort of hanging on to it. Got it. Uh, and so there's a number of novels like that, and there's also a couple of novellas in which she appears that are related to the Neverwinter um, game and also the campaign setting book. Uh, and the Never- fourth edition campaign setting book, she's sort of a villain that's related to that, and she does sort of get like pulled into um, the sphere of Thay and, and Zaz Tam. And one of the things that Zaz Tam says about her is that she is uh, she still has some of the old magic. So this is this is during the spell plague and stuff like that, where magic got, gets all rewritten, redone, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And Zaz Tam uh, really likes her because even though she's a little bit crazy, um, she has she's some his kind of crazy. <laughs> she has some <laughs> of her own power, and she's still <laughs> super powerful. So one of the things that she does is take a uh, sort of magical artifact uh, rod, ruby rod thing that uh, is uh, not a fifth element uh, reference, but uh, <laughs> is this thing from Esmodius, which basically allows her to summon a pit fiend and control it. And so she does that, and that's when um, I think Brunor dies in a battle against that that pit fiend and I stuff see. like that, and so on and so on. Okay, so it's so all been tied up with the, yeah. uh, the the companions and the story that, uh, that Bob has been writing yeah. forever. So, and those are like the mid-2000s that, 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 that she was kind of taken up as being uh, the companions? 12, 2014, yeah. somewhere okay. in that range. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was during the, during the fourth, toward the end of fourth edition. I see. Yeah. And it was expanded upon for the Neverwinter setting yeah. book. Yeah, Neverwinter setting book talked her, talked her, basically positioned her as a villain you could play with in the area. And then the Neverwinter MMO took her and ran with her and essentially based entire plot lines about her machinations. Right. I remember her figuring very prominently in the uh, yeah. uh, trailers. Yeah, and she's a marketing, marketing tentpole. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely whole, in the sure early I. stages. There were, there were people who cosplayed as Valindra yeah. at the conventions and stuff like that at the early phases as yeah. well, 2000. Yeah. Yeah. And it was during that phase that we sort of came to the conclusion that she can sort of alter her appearance slightly, so at times looking still like a living elf, at other times looking like the desiccated lich that she is. Mm. Yeah. With being such a powerful wizard, I mean, you can, any illusions. Yeah, not a problem exactly. for her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, typically a lich does need to maintain its phylactery. I mean, per the things that we know now in 5th edition, how the lore has been built up and so on, a lich needs to maintain its phylactery with souls in order to maintain their sort of living appearance. But a wizard can cast Disguise Self or any number of different spells and so on mm-hmm. to disguise them. Yep. I'm sorry if we're spoiling it for you guys who are watching this right now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we thought it was high time that Valindra show up um, in 5th edition. So... Uh, she does make an appearance in Tomb of Annihilation, an important one. Interesting. She's uh, not just like passing by on the streets of Port Nyanzar <laughs> or wave at her and that's it. She's, <laughs> she's actually got a goal, a mission, and she can either help or hinder you. She can actually help you. Interesting. Because is she working? Oh, I don't want to give anything away, but I won't go too into it. But like, I feel like that's her wheelhouse dealing with yeah. the death curse and everything that's Well, happening. she being a lich and working with a lich like Zastam and knowing other liches in the world, uh, as she does... Um, Liches aren't necessarily on board with what's happening in Tomb of Annihilation because somebody is stealing souls. Yeah. Um, and that means that they're not going into phylacteries. So if a lich dies while this is happening... And they not able to get souls to sustain their phylactery, they could yeah. be destroyed. They'd be destroyed forever. So I, yeah. I see that they could have uh, their own motives yeah. for wanting to get rid of right. what's happening. But ally with her at your own peril. Yes. Because she's not exactly out for anyone else except for her. Yeah. Yeah. And now, she's she, super powerful. Does she have <laughs> allies still in Thay? Is she still uh, mm-hmm. associated with Zastam yep. and, and everything yep. that's going on there? Yep. She's got an office there, corner office, <laughs> <laughs> overlooking Thay Mount. How's her benefits package? Is it good? Pretty darn good for, <laughs> for a dead girl. She's retired <laughs> for indefinitely. <laughs> Permanently, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty much got free reign. Um, Zastam gives her a lot of breathing room, so to speak. What, uh, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so what are, what are, I mean, this, again, we want to talk more about Thay eventually too, but like mm-hmm. what, what are the overarching goals of uh, using her as a pawn uh, in, in all of this? Using her as a pawn? She's no one's pawn. <laughs> oh, okay. She's not under like the command of Zastam? Uh, it's more like an alliance. I see. Of, I can't imagine what she actually sees in him other than power, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Valinda, um 
works with Zastan because occasionally she gets gifts. Yeah. <laughs> like, Here's a new spell you've never had before. Never you know, knew it's, before. Yeah. It's like, here, here's this magical item that can use the summon a pit fiend and control it. Okay. That right. seems yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure the relationship is built on power. And here are some minions and some other yep. underlings so, that you can yes. use. Yes. So you can pair her off with all kinds of red wizard underlings that have to do what she says or yeah. else face the wrath of Zastan. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and uh, does she have any uh, ties to the Elven Kingdom still? Like, is she, as far as I know, no. No, that's that's long, long gone. Um, any any sort of, uh, I mean, I, I would imagine Those beautiful Elven bridges were burned long yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine if uh, there could be elves alive that that uh, knew Valindra when she was a living elf, certainly. Mm. Um, but I don't think she gives a wit about that. <laughs> yeah, I think most of them are hoping that she died in the host tower explosion. Yeah. That's fascinating, though, to think of, like, a, a player character or, or someone who's playing an elf that could uh, mm. uh, have had a relationship with her or yeah, had a family possible. that had a relationship yeah. with her. If you're playing totally. a 500-year-old elf, why not? Yeah, exactly. Uh, any any other pointers you want to give people if they, they meet, their, meet her in, in, in the jungles of Chult? Actually, hmm. she, could be, she could have been one of the... Uh, uh, Ways that uh, play the player characters found out about it, right? Because there's, right. there's some stuff in the yes. early going where the Harpers make some inquiries and powerful rich liches that yeah. may not, you know, so she could yeah. be absolutely uh, a source of information. She could. Um, she could also be a puppet master. You never know. Right. Uh, yeah. You may run into her and not even know it's her, too, which is nice. Any pointers on killing liches? Mm, that's a tough one because uh, she doesn't, she hides her phylactery well. So good luck with that. Do we do we do dungeon masters know where her phylactery is? Uh, we do not tell you where her phylactery is. Interesting. Precisely. Ha uh-huh. ha. Uh-huh. <laughs> For that exact reason. Right. I got it. Yeah. Interesting. So players who read the adventure when they shouldn't <laughs> will not know where her phylactery is. We call those lies. players dungeon masters or oh, future dungeon yeah. masters. They will be able future to tell that masters. story to to their yeah. children and their players. DM Excellent. can put the phylactery wherever he wants or she wants. Nice, awesome, cool. All right. Well, I really like. Uh, I, I've always liked that character uh, of, of Valindra, and, and finding out more of her has been been fantastic. Um, where can people uh, pay, uh, pester you guys for for questions, not only on on, on her, but other uh, liches and whatnot? Uh, my Twitter account is Chris Perkins D N D. Mine is Cernet S E R N E T T. Awesome. And if you want to find out more about her, uh, uh, Valindra, you can probably check it out by playing the, the first opening levels. I mean, it's probably like the first 20 or 30 levels mm-hmm. or so of Neverwinter. Yep. Uh, really delve into her as an antagonist, and you get to you know find out about her and, and, and contend with her attack on the city there. So that's always a good way to get into it as well. So that's at playneverwinter.com. Um, and uh, if you want to pester me with any questions, I'm at Greg Tito. If you got any lore segments or any follow-up stuff, please get in touch with me, and uh, we will uh, probably address it in another lore you should know segment awesome thank you guys ba, 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 ba. and liches next liches get stitches yes thank you beardy Juan kenobi <laughs> that is going into my wheelhouse of using that phrase at all times uh very cool uh all right so we're going to get into the next one uh which is halrua is that how you pronounce it Sure. Sure. Halrua. Halrua. <laughs> I don't know if you have to put that much emphasis on you, right. but whatever. Em- emphasis. Halrua, because there's there's two, three A's, right? Yes. There's the A. H A L. And R U. Ah. So it might be Halrua. Yeah. Is there an umlaut? Is there an umlaut on top of the two A's? No. So you don't pronounce both of them? Halrua. Ricola. Excellent. Mm hmm. Oh, what sub race of elf was she? Do we know? Uh, she was a moon elf, I believe. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Given her skin color. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for that, Sparrow3183. That was a good question. I wasn't sure about that myself. Uh, all right. We are now going to jump into the next Laurie Chanel segment. Are you ready? Are you recording already? Oh, yes. Thumbs up means thumbs up from Ryan. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. You're welcome. Yay! Just sorry. I'm look at this. Did you see? Yeah, Holly made that. That's cool. Yeah, it is a, a, a pretty good green green devil yeah. face. Need a ring in the nose and turn it into a door knocker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have labyrinth on the brain from that now. No, I said hello, but that's close enough. 
Welcome to another Lore You Should Know segment. I am Greg Tito, and I'm going to pester these two gentlemen about lore from Dungeons and Dragons. I'm Chris Perkins. I'm Matt Surrett. Nice. We only have to do that for the second time today. Uh, and uh, yes, so we are going to delve into the, is it a nation of Halrua? Yeah. A nation. Yeah, a nation in the Forgotten Realms. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, mentioned prominently in uh, a Tomb of Annihilation. Is that correct? It's mentioned in passing. In passing, yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's another another piece of the puzzle uh, yes. uh, that uh, a, a Halruan skyship makes an appearance in the adventure. Oh, yeah. so they have skyships in Halrua. They, they we'll do. talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where where is it situated uh, uh, next to the Sword Coast? So it is far to the south. Far to the south. And so, uh, south of Chult? Yeah. Um, um, it's I'd have to look at a map. Uh, it might I, be I, same it might be latitude. South and but it's also to the uh, east. east as well. Okay. And um, it got its start um, for a similar reason actually as the Hostower of the Arcane and Luskin, uh, which we've mentioned on the other segment, uh, which is that uh, the Netherese were fleeing Netheril. So uh, Netheril's this ancient empire of magic where they have um, this thing called heavy magic, which is like this magical goo that they can use to make crazy magical stuff, and they have all these magical mythos, and they have all this crazy... Heavy magic. Yeah, it, it, all these weird things that, that is uh, going on in, at that time with magic. And so they're really playing with sort of like the fundamental elements of magic um, and able to just mix and match and do whatever they want with it. And so they have flying cities and flying ships and all these kind of stuff. And this was a human uh, empire. Yes. Yes. And they they did they were they based in land anywhere or was it the, the flying ships only? They were over an area of what that is now called the uh, desert of Anorak. I see. Okay. And the reason that's desert now is because uh, there was a race of uh, weird magical um, sort of abominations called the Therim. And they were at war with the Netherese. And so they had this sort of life draining, magic draining um, spells that they would come up and cast from underground uh, to attack the Netherese Empire. Yeah. So this is going on for a while. They're coming up and draining vast portions of the continent or the area, the Anorak and so on, and, and what, which was normally green and has lakes and all this kind of stuff, and turning into desert and blowing winds. And, um, mm -hmm. and the wizards who live up in their flying cities generally don't care. Um, As very short-sighted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, until some of them actually start coming up into the cities and attacking them in the cities, and then it starts to become a problem, and it's it's annoying some of the wizards. So some of them flee then. Some of the wizards from Netheril flee at that point, and they go to places like um, Illusk, which they found Illusk, which becomes Luskin. Mm -hmm. And Gauntlegrim is, a, is actually a settlement of Netherese wizards um, oh. originally. And uh, then there's uh, they go all the way down to Halrua. Um, then there's uh, Karsus's Folly. Karsus is a super wizard of, of Netheril. He mm -hmm. tries to basically claim uh, the mantle of god of magic yeah. from Mistra or oh. Mistral at the time. He fails. Big bad idea. In addition to all the Ferrum, there's this problem that magic basically fails and the world goes it goes awry and also all this flying cities, cities fall. fall. And some of them flee. Um, so like uh, the ones that went to... Um, basically, the shadow fell, or the plane of shadow, um, become the empire of shade, which comes back in uh, fourth edition period, basically. Got it. And in Helrua, uh, they uh, settle down down there. There's uh, there's wild uh, Rothe and Aurochs running around, and then there's some people just sort of herding them and living in this nice sort of area that's kind of walled in by mountains with an ocean nearby. And so the, the rocks are, are the livestock. and Yeah, aurochs are like a big bull thing. It's yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and they live there happily for a really long time. And so... Do they uh, bring the magic with them? They do. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting thing because essentially how ruin uh, is uh, sort of a version of netherese. So they, they basically keep the same language and culture and so on. But they actually end up sort of not being as much of a jerk as the netherese do. And so um, they survive the, the sort of destruction and or, or lack of magic for a period, and uh, they end up kind of becoming a very magical nation. So one of the things that's said about it is that uh, um, unlike sort of a standard Forgotten Realms, about a third of the population has some latent magical talent, like some ability 
they're intelligent enough and they have enough sort of yeah, inborn pedigree. pedigree to sort of have that. Uh, and then like of that number, maybe another third is actually what you would call a first level wizard. Mm. And then some smaller number of that m n number of people then actually becomes real wizards. But it's it's loaded with wizards and magic and all kinds of new spells and stuff like that. And one of the things they took with them were the flying ships that Netherese had, and so they used those flying ships. And so throughout like the second and third edition period, um, Halru is known for these flying ships mainly because people don't generally get to go to Halru. Yeah, it's so isolated and um, sequestered. The only way you even know it's there is if ships come over the mountains and you see them. Yeah. Um, one of those ships was uh, in the <coughs> Front Realms uh, co Classics comics, which... Uh, I had to. I was like, "Hey, wasn't that a Halrun skyship?" And yes, <laughs> it was. The, the the wizard, I think his name is. Where is it here? Uh, Dwalamar Omen is a wizard. Uh, this is him on the cover here. White-haired guy. He's got a c crazy fan of hair in the head. Um, nice. And he flies around with his buddies in the, that comic series, um, trying to solve various problems and find artifacts and stuff like that on the ruined skyship. Nice. So was the faction that fled uh, the Nethery's Empire, were they uh, like a, a, a family or like something that like, you know, it seemed like they, they seemed more generally good aligned uh, uh, people in, in, in Halrua. Is that true? Or I think is that they were just humans. Yeah. yeah. So they sort of ran the gamut. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, I mean, there's other things too. So like, uh, there's another weirdly highly magical nation in the Front Realms besides Thay and Haru, and that's uh, an island nation called Nimbral. And so Nimbral is actually uh, refugees from Haru. So Haru is is um, obviously a whole bunch of wizards, and they like to worship Mistra and Azuth, and that's kind of their pr their primary deities of these magic gods. Um, one of the magic gods uh, is. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to mess up because there's too many gods with L names. Lyra, the illusion goddess? Yeah. And uh, and the, there's a bunch of um, ruined wizards who are really big into Lyra, and they're like, hey, our goddess is getting you know downtrodden in this place that just worshiped Mistra and Azuth so much. Mm -hmm. So they actually leave and form another community on Nimbral. Oh. And so that is a crazy magical um, island that's protected by all these huge illus illusions and stuff like that. And weird things that happen there. They ride around in uh, hippogriffs and have people wearing invisible armor. and Just as like, yeah, yeah. just like you do. Yeah. I just yeah. have my invisible armor on. You can't see it, but it's, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, so how, what is Halrua? Uh, is it a fertile land? Do they do, is that why the sky ships do so much trading? Is it because they need to get food in there? Or like, how, how does it work? Well, so uh, in the fourth edition, well, I don't know. Um, Originally, uh, it, it's more or less self-sustaining, and the wizards go out in s search largely of only important things. So they're only leaving for some really important mission. The, the skyships are kind of fragile. It's not a sort of technology, if you want to call it that, that they want falling into enemy hands. Right. So they, they only go out on s sort of special occasions and uh, certain quests or if they need particular um, items right. or Like you can imagine uh, whatever. an expedition aboard a skyship to go and see what's up in the desert of Anorak, you know, ages after they've left, you know, some hint of magic that was left behind or some ancient mystery that they're curious to hear about. Or they might go to some other far-flung land because somebody was spinning tales about a society there with some odd magical ability or magical lore. Mm. Um, or they might need some s special component right, you know, for some for ritual spell they're like doing. That, and they, it's not common where they are, and so right. they have to go and do that kind of thing. So they didn't, they didn't do a lot of sort of like regular trading with other nations and that kind of thing. Yeah. They're not in expansionist insular. the way that a lot of human cultures are. Mm. Um, they're pretty content with their lot for the most part. They had to contend a lot uh, during the second and third edition periods with um, Dambrath, which is a nearby nation that was sort of would occasionally invade and attack them and uh, had pirates coming to them, ports and stuff like that. And so they tended to sort of turtle up. Is um, there a uh, uh, like a fortified city um, that they defend? They have, they have the a number of cities. Uh, I forget their what biggest the, city is Halara. Uh, yeah, H-A-L-A-R-A-H-H. -A -A Got it. And that's where their city government and everything is? Yeah, and, and they had a um, various sort of, um, uh, there's a, like a, a coterie of wizards, high-level wizards, that were sort of governing their populace and that kind of a thing. Yep. And uh, so then in the Spell Plague, 4th uh, edition, um, the 
the outside world believes that it's been destroyed and it's just a giant spell plague land. Like there's this plague rot lands idea in the fourth edition where there's just huge swaths of areas that are just filled with chaotic magic and craziness and mutant creatures and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. And all of Hellerua falls into that. And the assumption is that uh, it has been destroyed by this by the spell plague and all their crazy magic that they had got ruined by the spell plague and they were destroyed. Well, in point of fact, these really potent wizards who knew lots of stuff about magic kind of got the warning beforehand and in the switching of worlds and the spell plague and all that happening, they just sort of rode the current and went along to a beer. And so what has happened to them in a beer while they've been gone, you know, and in this other planet, essentially, and now that they're back is a little unclear. People don't really know. I mean, they're just seeing the ships now coming into port or flying over their cities and stuff like that occasionally. So... Interesting. So they they were human. So you know, generations could have passed. Yes. Uh, uh, and and did they, or did they? Are they are they individuals that people know of being Hal ruins are still alive? I imagine m- most of them being humans that that we would know. They're probably dead, but there's lots of ways to to extend your life in D and D. So I guess there's that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially if you're a wizard on, yeah. on a skyship. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's interesting. I, I would love to figure out more about how they rode that wave uh, uh, and uh, delve into that. Uh, they did it with magic. They did it with magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's one of those things where, where this is one of the most highly magical societies in the world, and uh, it's uh, organized, and it generally isn't very fractious. So someplace like Fey and so on is much more fractious um, and you know when you look at the the uh, map of the world and you see that you know Nimbril disappeared or Lantan disappeared and uh, Halrua disappeared but they didn't disappear but it wasn't also covered in crazy plague rot magic mm-hmm. right well, there, well there's a reason for that some of these places just decided to maybe put in some protections yeah. and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, do some things right so are they still worshippers of, uh, of Mistra one would assume so but you know, we haven't been there yet. Hmm. So. Yeah, we have not. Uh, we have not had any major excursions to Halrua yet. We've just kind of teased the name in a couple places. Yeah. Well, I like the idea of the there there being explorers and mm-hmm. or you know people now putting out feelers in the world after they've been returned. Yeah. You yeah. can imagine it's sort of an interesting line to walk. Some of them do feel the urge to go up, but at the same time, you don't want to attract unwanted attention and uh, let anybody know that you're doing well and your land is, you know, <laughs> worth something. Yeah. This place is great. Yeah. By the way, all of our magic items survived the spell plague. Did yours? Oh, oh really? no. That's so weird. <laughs> huh. Well, we got them all locked up, uh, yeah. kind of. Here's the combination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we trust you guys. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, would um, if you were going to play a wizard uh, character, uh, maybe w- would would Halrua be a good place to sure to, to, to use yeah. as your you could be a Halrua, no problem there. Yeah, you know, pretty pretty cool to have a character whose heritage traces back to the earliest days of human magic. Yeah, they they have sort of a I think a, a an unusual expectation of magic. I think in Hal, Halrua, like. I've always imagined, I, I don't think that's anywhere in the lore, but I've always imagined that, like, they would have essentially magic air conditioners and, you know, stuff like that. Like, they would have figured this stuff out now. Yes. And so... Nobody has to pick up the garbage. In yeah. The they've, they've got that solved. <laughs> okay, good. So, so you know, they might go to other places and just kind of be like, well, what, huh? What is you this know? disgusting <laughs> shithole? <laughs> don't you have brooms, magic brooms that can clean this up? Mental note, never visit Baldur's Gate again <laughs> without my made right without my yeah. boots <laughs> uh is it, is it is it similar to eberron in the in that kind of a society where like everything feels yeah, like in, magic in, as insofar as sharn is a highly magical city where there are mage rights and other individuals who are dedicated to creating utility uh, uh, getting the most utility out of their magic mm. i suspect that the hell ruins have figured out much the same that magic can have a very pedestrian use uh just to make lives easier yeah so yeah. that they can actually worry about the important things. Yeah, and if you think about a society where there are people who basically have superpowers, uh, even though they have to work really hard to have the superpowers, they have superpowers. Um, you kind of want to spread that around so that you don't make the other people angry at you. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you have superpowers, but like, you know, 100 arrows coming your way might still kill you. Right. So, you know. They yeah. would also have weird laws there, I suspect, where, you know, if one third of the population can fly 
on their own, like without cars. Are there flying speed limits? There's got to be a fly. Oh, yeah, it's got to be flying speed limits, and then rules for like dropping shit on people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> flight lanes for their yeah, sky flight ships. lanes for their sky ships. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So you're not like driving into the side of somebody's flying tower. Oh yeah, see, I was imagining uh, uh, like kind of Zeppelin like you know stations where they would park mm-hmm. and do stuff. Is they it like that, or is it? Yeah, th- or, okay. Yeah, they have yeah the, in fact, stations. Zeppelin's a good thing to bring up because their sky ships aren't just um, floating boats in the air. Uh, they are usually held aloft like a dirigible um, oh, with okay. a with a giant airbag in addition to sort of the, yeah. the magical things that are helping. That helps. Stable. That changes it up. So it's not you don't have to depend on the magic. Yep. If you go through some yes. kind of anti magic thing, you're not immediately screwed. So if you want to go to the land of blimps, <laughs> Halru is the place to the be. Beautiful land of blimps. Yeah. Uh, are there any? Uh, this is the final thing before we move because I want. I, I, now I'm thinking about the culture of that. Like, are there specific magic orders uh, around the schools? Like, is that kind of idea there? there is there like a Harry maybe, Potter type, yeah. Hogwarts there type? Maybe. Um, so the the lore points to a couple things. One, uh, Halru has is has a noted dislike of sorcerers. So oh, so if you have an innate yeah, dr- and draconic just, magic, they're like yeah, get not, out. It's sort of like mutants in the X Men. You know, you're not controlled, yeah. right? Um, and so there's that. And then I imagine that they probably would focus more on wizardry itself as opposed to like dividing up into schools. The reason being is that the division of 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 schools and so on tends to create these camps of Thay. thought and mm. Thay. Thay did that. Halrua didn't make that mistake, I suspect. Um, it's more like these schools are different subjects that you learn at university. Right. right. So you don't have to specialize. You right. have, you're just an illusionist. You're just Whereas in Fae, you are part of the sort of illusion cast, and you, are, you stand apart from the diviners and the abjurers and the necromancers. Right, which, is, which points to, again, why the, the people who founded Nimrol might have had to have left because, you know, they were like, no, no, we're, we're illusionists. This is cool. Right. <laughs> you we know, don't right. deal with all that other stuff. Yeah. Right. We're very focused. Um, are there is there a a large uh, religious population there? Like is there like the, the Church of Mistra is that big or is it more like just wizards? Uh, well, I certainly imagine that that most of the populace would be focused on worship of Mistra because the Mistra, in the sort of pantheistic way of looking at the world of D and D and and magic and so on, isn't just a goddess of magic. She's also kind of a goddess of stars. She's also kind of a goddess of just the idea of the wonder of the world. Mm. Um, and so uh, it's it's not just wizards and magicians who worship Mistra. Yeah. Um, what about warlocks? Are there any warlock culture there? Or is that um, a big no-no? I don't know. I, I, hmm. Yeah, I think that they would be given the same dirty looks as sorcerers. Yeah, right? maybe even maybe, maybe even more worse. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you've, uh, warlocks are... are, are Characters they that draw their power from dubious sources. Yeah, the, and what promises have they made? You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. And yeah. what what doom could they visit upon us? And it seems like the 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 uh, concentration on knowledge and learning that knowledge is not really yeah. what warlocks are about. Yeah, right? the warlock. That's that's just a shortcut. You <laughs> you yeah. cheated. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is an interesting question is what do the sort of the wizardly types and the ma- magic types think of the muggles? Basically, the the non magically inclined like yeah. do they just look upon them with pity are they relegated to some secret status yeah that's lower i don't, don't know cuz you said a third so i mean that's two thirds of the population that is right. not yeah. magical exactly. which is still and, and that's large why i said you know that they, they can't get away with just sort of treating them like crap because um, and and obviously that's what um Netheril did right and you know that didn't yeah when the didn't work friends, so well so. right Okay, cool. A lot of little plot threads uh, in there to, to tug mm-hmm. on. So I'm hoping we visit it again at some point, and then yeah. also uh, uh, the players out there. I think point of, point of trivia, the airship that you can encounter in Tomb of Annihilation is called the Star Goddess, ah. alluding to Matt's point about Mistra earlier. And uh, uh, for those of you who watched Stream of Annihilation, you may have seen uh, uh, an episode that took place on the Star Goddess. That's right, yes. That's right, Rudy Rutenberg's uh, yes. uh, session. Yeah, you could play Hell Ruins. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Awesome. So, yeah, go look in the uh, the archive for that to learn more about uh, uh, how they interpreted uh, how Rua and everything that was going mm-hmm. on there. Um, how could the, these fine folks get in touch with you guys? Uh, I am on Twitter at Chris Perkins DND. I'm on Twitter as Cernet, S-E-R-N-E-T-T. At Cernet. 
Mm-hmm. At Cernet. That makes it very easy to remember. Ma- at Cernet. Ma- at Cernet. Uh, I am uh, at Greg Tito. Uh, feel free to pester me for any uh, – I keep saying pester, but it's not pestering at all. It's actually quite nice. Uh, for asking me for nor- new lore topics uh, to uh, delve into, uh, you guys have been great about coming up with great ones. And uh, there's always – Send more. There's always more. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it pulls on our brains and make us think about uh, areas, and we really like that. So please do that. Uh, to all of us, if you want. Uh, thank you again. If you're listening to this on the podcast, you can watch us record Lori Snow as well as Dragon Chalk live on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash DND. We do it Monday starting at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so tune into that if you can. Thank you very much, guys. And we'll be back with more lore uh, later on. Bye-bye. Bye. Ba-ba-ba-bum. All right. Thank you, guys. I think that was uh, that was good. We got into it. I don't see any like big questions here. Oh, where did uh, where do all the Janassi go after the Sundering? Oh, that's a big that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, they're still around. Yeah, they're still around. I mean, the the um, so there's a couple. Th- mm, uh, the there were a bunch of Janassi in uh, Calumport, and um, they or Calum Shan in general. They were kind of controlling the nation. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was actually a proposed series of comics that was going to tell the story of how that came to change mm-hmm. and how there was an uprising, essentially, of slaves against sort of the genie and Genasi ruling class. And so I think Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide uh, takes the position that that's already happened. And Callum Chan is back more towards sort of second edition, third edition roots. Um, but that that comics uh, series did not come to pass. Um, similarly, there was something with Netheril and Onorok um, and the Ferrum coming back uh, that was supposed to be, I think, uh, in Dungeons & Dragons Online, mm. where there was going to be a series of adventures that dealt with that storyline and how Onorok was being retransformed back into a desert. And again, that's alluded to in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, but maybe not fully explained. And that's because, again, we were going to have another storytelling uh, aspect of the brand that was going to tell that story, and we didn't get to it. Nice. So there's so there's um, the funny yeah, thing is there's so many of those things. You're like, oh, it was going to be like this, but we, you know, yeah. it's all yeah. There's so many things like that. <laughs> <laughs> it come to pass, but I like I like delving into it with you guys because we can figure out. Oh, here's a nice yeah. little interesting tidbit that only is in your head or in right. Matt's head yeah, or in someone else. And like, oh, it was going like to be that like time this. we said in what was it out of the abyss. Oh, if you want more information about Orcus and his plans, read the Troy Denning novel which never came out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all there. It's all going to be there. Oh, there's so much fun stuff uh, to delve into. So we will do that more so uh, uh, with you guys as we go forward. So thank you so much. And we're going to take a little break here and get ready to talk to uh, Jared, uh, pro Jared. Jared, what's his last name? Hard K. Hard K. Uh, uh, Kana. Kana. Ben Bauer. Kanabin Bauer. Yeah. Kanabin Bauer. Kanabin Bauer. Kanabin Bauer. Yeah. Just keep okay. on saying that. It's I know. Really funny. Kanabin Bauer. <laughs> Kanabin Bauer. We'll be talking to Jared Kanabin Bauer uh, in about uh, five He'll or ten minutes. I'll be impressed that you say it. I'm, right. I'm, I've got to. Kanabin Bauer. I'll chide you if you pronounce it wrong. <laughs> He's going to be like, <laughs> it's Nabin Bauer. The K is silent. <laughs> no, don't say it wrong to me now because then I'm going to get my head wrong. All right. Thanks, you guys. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.